When you are new to budgeting, it can feel very daunting to create your first budget. It can feel like you have no idea what you're doing and because you're so overwhelmed and disorganized, you don't even know where to start. There are a ton of videos about budgeting out there, but today I wanna to walk you through how I help other people create their first budget and the ways that I think it's easiest to create your first budget to save yourself a lot of stress in the beginning. Hi, if you're new here, my name is Mary. This is Pennies Not Perfection, where we are paying off $43,000 in debt and we are saving for our financial goals and creating a better financial future full of freedom and flexibility and all the things that we want out of life. We are doing that through budgeting our money and earning extra money on the side to increase our income. Learning to budget well and to budget without our bank account going negative and tears being shed each month has been a long journey for us. It has taken a while to get it down pat. Today I'm going to walk you through what I think is the easiest way to create your first budget from start to finish and the thing you need to do to make sure that budget works and gets better for next time. Let's start with our first budget. You don't have to make budgeting complicated. There are tons of different ways to do it. There are apps, there are spreadsheets, there are budgeting printables that I use and make. There are so many ways to do it, but to keep it simple, all you really need to do is list out everything. You can use pen and paper and create your first budget in no time at all. First thing you'll want to do is to gather up the supplies you'll need to determine your current expenses and spending. The first step is to know what you're already spending. To start your first budget, you'll need a few different things in order to get organized. The supplies you'll need to create your first budget include a pen or a marker of some kind. You could use a crayon for all it matters, just some sort of writing utensil. My favorite pens are these Tombow dual brush pens or Papermate Inkjoy gel pens. I just like those specific You'll also want a highlighter, you'll want some sort of paper, and you can use a budgeting worksheet if you want to make it easier. I do have some in my shop. You will also need bank statements to show your debit card spending, credit card statements, receipts that you might have from the previous month, and anything that shows what you've currently been spending. The key here is to get the basic supplies you'll need to gather up in order to understand your current spending habits so you'll be able to start your first budget. For the first step, you'll write out all of your bills. You can start by brainstorming a list of things you know and writing down everything you remember. This list should include everything you pay every month that is a set price like your rent or mortgage or utility bill. You'll want to give your statements a look and add anything you've forgotten, which includes things that are easy to forget like auto pays and subscriptions. Next to each bill, write out the due date or the date that you pay it every month. This will help for the next steps where you're going to plot out your expenses based on when things must be paid. Since I budget by paycheck, the next step is really critical for us, and that is ordering your bills by calendar and paycheck. So you'll write out all of your bills in order or on a calendar view. This step is optional, but it's very helpful if you've been living paycheck to paycheck and find that certain paychecks leave you with no money at the end of paying all of your bills. Laying out your bills in a visual format can help you see where you can improve. Maybe all of your bills are due at one time of the month, so it's obvious why you're struggling to have any leftover money during that single paycheck. You can look at the month and add in where you get paid so that you can see where the bills are actually falling in relationship to your income hitting your bank account. Two big ways that you can help with this kind of problem with your bill due dates in order to stop living paycheck to paycheck are to change your due dates and to split bigger bills between paychecks. So laying them all out gives you an idea where you can use one or the other of these techniques. If all of your bills fall within one paycheck period, you can call and move some of your bill due dates. This is easy to do with a lot of different companies and they will move when your payment is due to earlier or later in the month. Spreading out your bills throughout the month will split them between paycheck cycles and that can be very helpful for your overall cash flow when you are paying for things by paycheck. You can also split your bills between multiple paychecks if possible. You can do this by splitting between paychecks yourself or with the company that you're paying. For many big bills like your rent or mortgage, this can be very helpful. For us, we were able to contact our mortgage company where we were paying $1,200 all at once in the beginning of the month. That took up a big chunk of our paycheck and we contacted them and switched to bi-weekly payments. So now we pay $600 every other week. This is easier to do for us and it helped us with the cash flow as we were budgeting by paycheck and it relieves a lot of burden on your budget. You can do this by yourself with big bills like rent by putting aside half of the payment and savings until the paycheck when it's ready to be paid. 
So every paycheck, you'll put something aside toward that bill instead of having to pay it all at once. This is by far the best way that we've been able to budget our money and having it on a calendar and seeing where our paychecks actually fall in relationship to our bills has been helpful for us doing our money flow in and out of our bank account so that we've never had to go negative and we've always known what is going to be paid and when it's going to be paid. Having it split up is very helpful for not having all of our bills due at one time of the month. So I highly recommend this if you've never budgeted before to do it this way, just because it's the easiest way to get started and you can start from here and then improve as you go. The final step here is to add up all of your bills so that you know how much you're spending on fixed expenses for the month or for each paycheck as you budget those out. After you have all your bills set, you're going to next categorize your previous spending. So it's time to take a look at what you've already been spending every single month. This process is generally eye-opening if you've never done it before and most people are shocked by how much they spend in certain categories especially ones like food, but it's critical that you take a look at the spending you've already been doing so you know how to budget going forward. For this step, you're going to review your spending over the last three months and group spending into categories. This can take a bit of time, but it's critical knowledge to have and having a view over the last three months gives you a better picture than if you were doing just one single month. The easiest way to do this is to go through your statements and assign each category a highlighting color. And each time you see that spending from that category, highlight it in the color you've selected. When you're done highlighting a month into categories, add up all of the spending in that particular category. Doing this for three months gives you a better idea of what you actually spend rather than just doing it for one single month. It gives you a nice baseline to see what you spend in a month and on average. The types of spending you'll do in this activity are looking for spending in categories like groceries, beauty, entertainment, eating out, and anything that is something that you're doing every single month that you are spending on. You may also want to do a miscellaneous category for anything that you can't remember what you bought or what it was, and you'll see that this adds up. Now that you know what you were already spending, it's time to add your variable spending to your budget plan. You'll look at the categories of spending that you already had and see what you were spending on average for that month. You'll want to cut this back, but you'll want to reduce it based on your previous spending in a reasonable way. Once you have your totals, be realistic about those categories in your first month of budgeting. You don't want to try to cut out everything to the bare bones immediately. That's just a recipe for failing and giving up on budgeting in the very first month. Instead, try cutting out 10% of your miscellaneous spending or picking one category to focus on at first. And then if you spend less, you've done great and have a win for your first month. Finally, you'll want to think about sinking funds and irregular expenses that pop up throughout the year, but aren't necessarily bills you pay every single month. Everyone has some items they must pay for during the year that don't happen every month. This includes things like car insurance, car maintenance, yearly vet visits for pets, There are a number of things that you can do for sinking funds and there's a lot of different categories that I've shared in previous videos and on my blog. If you want to take a look at those, I will link them down below. To plan your sinking funds, you will need to figure out which categories you need to spend money on during the year and the amount that you'll need for each irregular bill or an estimated expected amount for unexpected expenses like car repairs. When you know a full number for any kind of irregular bill, you simply divide that number by the amount of months or paychecks until you need to pay it. This is a pretty simple process that allows you to save up in a small savings account for expenses that you know are coming but won't be coming every single month. As an example, if you want to save $600 for Christmas, then divide that by 12 and plan to save $50 a month. If you have to pay $300 in car insurance that's due every six months, but you're only three months away and get paid twice a month, then divide that 300 by six paychecks for a total of $50 that you need to save every single paycheck. You'll do this for every sinking fund that you may need and then add all of these in to the final budget plan that you're creating for your first month of budgeting. The final step of creating your budget is of course to list all of the dollar amounts for your bills, your expected spending in each variable category and your sinking fund savings amounts. These are all of the things that go into your planned spending and you add all of it up and then that is the amount that you need to cover your expenses. 
If your income exceeds this number, then great, you're done and you can plan for your leftover income in this amount to cover financial goals like paying down extra debt or to save money for the future and you are set because you are spending less than you earn. If your income won't cover this final number, then you have to look back and make more drastic cuts and find areas where you can cut expenses and your spending levels. While you don't want to be drastic with your first budget, you do need to make cuts in order to cover everything you're going to spend or need to spend for the month. If you've been living above your means and spending too much every month, then this process might be more painful than it is for other people starting a budget. The number one rule of budgeting is to never, ever, ever, ever spend more than you make. So if your income is less than your planned expenses, then you have to make more changes and cut more things out. You can also budget in a buffer or a cushion for your checking account if that makes you more comfortable. That is totally okay and something you can add as an expense in your budget. And then you can always make sure that you are saving and investing for the future. So if you have a retirement plan at work, you should probably be contributing to that if they have a match. And these are all extra things, but the first thing for your very first month is to make sure that your expenses are less than your income and to make sure that you're not overspending. In order to do that, you're going to have to track your spending. This is the last and most important part of budgeting, but it's the one we tend to all gloss over, but it's crucial to actually succeeding at budgeting. You must track your spending. If you don't track spending, you won't know if your budget worked. So use whatever method you like. You can do it pen and paper, Excel, an app. It doesn't matter. Just make sure you're tracking and that you are paying attention to which categories you're actually meeting with your budget or where you are overspending. So there you have it. That's how easy creating a budget can be for the first time. It doesn't have to be this overwhelming, daunting thing. And what's better is that even if you don't get it right and your first budget sucks, it's okay. My first um, like 20 budget sucked. I really wasn't that great at it to start with and that's okay. I got better each month. We kind of figured out what was going wrong. You can't get better unless you make the mistake first. So give yourself a little grace if this budget isn't amazing, but know that it is the first step to getting really good with your money and to hitting all of those financial goals that you really want in life. I have a whole playlist full of videos that are all about budgeting when you're a beginner. So check them out and learn about sinking funds, how to budget your money, debt payoff strategies, and everything you might wanna know about budgeting.